Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of Talking Cardboard. We've got a new face here today, Ryan. Ryan. Uh, like always, my name is Corey and uh, I'm pretty much using Ryan just for the game here because it is his copy <laughs> of the game. So um, let's get uh, right into the review. This is Undaunted Normandy. So let's get right into the pros of the game. Uh, Ryan, what is your favorite parts of the game? I think the biggest pro for me was uh, bidding for initiative. It was challenging, but fun. You only get four cards in your hand to start and you have to play one of them to hope to win initiative. And then getting initiative is very important. I think probably more than any other aspect that you have control over in the game, Getting initiative might be the way that you win or lose the game if you're not getting it enough. Yeah, so. definitely agree with that. That's definitely one of my pros too. Um, bidding for that initiative out of your card or out of your hand, you actually lose a card to uh, try to gain initiative too. Right. Um, so that aspect of the game is definitely a pro for me as well. Um, another huge pro for me is uh, the fact that each card has multi uses on it. Um, so it's a whole lot of fun to kind of decide. Uh, what action out of the four, or, or most of the cards have four actions on them, but uh, what action on the card you'd like to use uh, for that specific turn. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really fun too, and that kind of plays into the uh, the choosing what card you want to use for initiative as well, um, because you have so many different options for each card. Right. So it's like, do I want to use this to try to gain initiative now or not? Um, another cool part of that too is that uh, whoever has initiative, if you tie with, with the same value card, um, then you actually get to keep initiative. Yeah. So having it to begin with is huge because you can use kind of the card that gums up your deck most, the Fog of War card. You can play that, and if the other player tries to sneak one out, you still keep initiative, only give it, giving up nothing. Exactly. Yep. So that was really cool. Um, I guess some more pros for me, too, is that there are many different scenarios in the booklet, uh, many different missions. I guess I might plan to a little bit of our cons a little bit later on as well, but um, I like the variety. Uh, I like that you can, it feels like you can replay the missions um, maybe a couple few times before they get old, um, but there's plenty, uh, plenty in the base box, I think, to get started with. For sure. I like the distance modifier. Um, so the further you are away, depending on if you're in the trees or not, uh, that could add some defense to your guys as well. Right. So it's kind of fun tactically to to um, try to do that the best mm -hmm. you can too. Designers David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin use the names for some of their play testers as uh, character names in the game. I yeah. think that's really cool that they kind of gave a nod to people that helped them along the way and helped make the game what it is. Yeah. And the uh, artwork direction definitely did justice in this game too. Um, it's a little bit more of the cartoony, drawn-on artwork, but it definitely really works. It's not overly gruesome, not uh, you know overly you know too deep into the whole uh, being super realistic. But yeah, I I think that it's good enough that if this is really your thing, you like historical skirmishes, you still feel like you're in that world. But also, if you don't love being a Nazi commander, it's very easy to take yourself out of that because there's not a single swastika in the game. Right. I think that was refreshing not to kind of get a slapped in the face <laughs> with all of that insignia and stuff, every card you play. So that was cool. Yeah. I guess getting right into it, any uh, neutrals or cons for you? A couple cons that I had were not necessarily a con for me personally because i don't mind it as much but i think people who buy this game that are looking for uh kind of a more realistic more of a simulation game is that the luck of the dice is very prevalent and uh again if you like we had one game where i feel like my rifleman i just hit every time which is obviously unusual and very lucky yeah <laughs> but it ended the scenario probably a lot quicker than it was meant to yep and also on games where we were both rolling poorly, that really makes the game take longer than I think it should as well. Right, and I guess I could kind of add on to that as well. Um, the luck of the dice is definitely one of my turnoffs too, um, but also the luck of drawing cards. I mean, you're gonna draw a hand of four cards every round and mm -hmm. uh, based on what you draw, those are your only options you have with. Um, kind of back to my pros though, obviously each, each card has four different or three to four different actions or whatever else on the card. Um, but having said that, you are really handcuffed to the cards you draw. And also as units die in this game, um, 
you actually go through your hand, through your deck, you know, eventually, or discard pile, and eventually through your deck, and uh, those cards are removed from the game. So, mm -hmm. really, it didn't feel as much of like a deck building game per se. Yeah. I totally agree with that. It felt more of more of a deck management game, or almost maybe like a deck deconstruction game. Because anytime you added, you were also making it so that the cards like if you needed to move your scouts around or you need to get your riflemen around to move and control points which is for most scenarios the whole point mm -hmm. they would come up so much less often and it really sort of bogged the game down the more you added to your deck yep yeah definitely i think what was a pro and now kind of moved towards neutral is i do like how fast the game moves especially once you get all the terminology down the first several scenarios at least you can really get through in maybe 20 to 30 minutes per game which is nice you can just move on to the next one if you want more yep. you can stop and play something else if you want a different feel but as we moved on and got bigger maps and more options we were going for two and a half hours two hours yep and yep. we're probably still at least another hour away from finishing the game, and that kind of became not as fun and pretty repetitive. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the, the cons for me, is that uh, some of the longer scenarios or the more um, larger maps that you get into, they can draw out to at least two, two and a half hours. <clears throat> and this game really, the sweet spot is 45 minutes to 60 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. um, like Ryan said too, in some of our first couple of games, we were getting it done in 20 to 30 minutes. And I felt like that that was a sweet spot for this game. Um, the mechanisms involved in the game, what you're doing, the fact that it's not a super heavy war game, it's more on the lighter midweight side. Um, I think that 30 to 45 minutes, maybe an hour is where it needs to stay. Mm -hmm. Anything longer than that, and you're just gonna be kind of twiddling your thumbs and, and yeah. getting sick of it. Yeah. I guess moving into teachability, I think the game is very easy to learn and very easy to teach. I don't know if you feel any different about that. Yeah, I mean, we had to kind of re-reference rules, maybe the, the for, for sure the first uh, scenario we played, but I think after that we were pretty much had everything down and didn't have to look back at much ever, which was nice. Yep. Uh, the rule book really meshes with the scenario book well, and you can kind of just start off by playing, and the game teaches you as you progress through the first scenario, which was also fun. Yep. Uh, I guess rolling right into the depth or the weight complexity of the game um, on BoardGameGeek.com. They've got it at a 2.1 out of 5, which I feel is pretty reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. it's definitely, it definitely feels like a middleweight game. Um, definitely not for younger kids or um, not, as, not as family weight as one might think. I think it's you know for somebody... Yeah, I agree with that. Who can be a little bit a little bit older, maybe teenagers, and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, definitely had de enough meat, enough crunch, enough uh, mm -hmm. complexity to the game where you felt like you were doing something and actually making some nice decisions in the yeah. game. Yeah, but not too heavy. So kind of agree with that. Totally agree. Um, okay. So on to uh, try or buy. Try before you buy. What do you think, Ryan? I think if you can try it, if it's easily available. That being said. Four games, I feel like, of this caliber, even if you're buying at MSRP, it's a pretty cheap game. I mean, $40 off the shelf, or you can find it online for between 20 and 30 bucks, is not bad for a game with this much in the box. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it, it, it is easy to get into this game and pretty quickly realize that it's not really for you. Even if you like the genre of war game, if you like Access and Allies, Memoir 44, other games like that, it's not the same and this might not be for you. Do you think you have to enjoy the war theme to really no, get into it? No, this? not at all. It's because of the art and because it's still good art but pretty nondescript as far as kind of what size you're on. Mm -hmm. um, it's very easy just to look at this and consider it kind of an area control skirmish type game. Um, so into our final ratings, uh, we'll start with Ryan, uh, 1 through 10. Uh, I think I'm right at an 8. I definitely enjoyed playing it. Uh, it is a game that if I have somebody new over that I think might be interested, especially if they kind of like World War II history type stuff, I definitely get this game on the table or recommend it to them. I definitely can't go higher than that. It's not something that I think I'll enjoy playing. In the long term, it definitely has a shelf life. Uh, once you get through all the skirmishes, especially playing both sides, there's not a lot to go back to, I don't right. think. Right. But I think I'm at an eight. 
Yeah, and I, I think after our last play or so on the longer side, I probably would have rated this more of a seven or seven and a half. But I would say overall, out of the many many plays that we got done um, over the last few days here, uh, I would give it an eight out of ten as well. Um, definitely a solid eight. Uh, definitely deserving of it. Um, everything from the mechanisms to just kind of the light to middle weeks middleweight skirmish that you get out of this game. I think it is a whole lot of fun for what it offers. Um, and I think with a lot of the scenarios too, it doesn't overstay its welcome. You can get it done in 20, 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes at the most, and that is the sweet spot for this game. Mm -hmm. um, uh, really after about 30 to 45 minutes, you will definitely feel like you weren't cheated on anything. I, I think it definitely has enough complexity and enough depth to where you felt like you got something done. Yeah. Um, and maybe outsmarted your opponent, or maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it made you think that way. But uh, yeah. yeah, definitely an eight out of 10 for me. So that does it for our review today of Undaunted Normandy. I know um, Undaunted North Africa comes out sometime here, uh, coming this summer, I believe. Yeah, June, I think. Yeah, so I'm excited to try that one. Yeah. See what else that it's offers. It's supposed to add vehicle mechanics, like you said. We'll see how that plays out. Yep, yep, try a couple different factions too. Not that the, the factions were differentiated in this game at all but we'll see how north africa plays out and uh like always we appreciate you watching if you like the video give it a thumbs up and uh if you like what we're doing here on the channel uh, definitely consider subscribing we are looking to uh, add more content more frequently now that we have more contributors and uh we will talk to you all later